things I'd like to ask of you right now is if you would put your phone on silent mode, um, uh, turn them off as you could either or if you prefer, um, so that uh, we may have no interruptions in the concert or by the performer. And I'd like to tell you right now, there are going to be different tones that you're going to hear based on your location um, in the seating arrangement. If you're going to, if you move forward, you'll probably get a little bit more texture in the sound. But if you're in the back, you're going to get some of that rich ghostly echo as well. So there are pros and cons or about your seating location. And maybe you might at some point choose to shift your location if it's not too disruptive in order to appreciate that difference of the tonality in the music. Um, I'm pleased to invite Cornelius Boots to Earlham College. Um, he is our 2023 Institute for Education on Japan guest artist. Um, after meeting Cornelius last summer here in Richmond, no less than what might be called a uh, concept performance, um, I knew that I had to get him here, so I'm really pleased to be able to um, get him here this evening in light of a very uh, busy schedule, but also this time of the year I know is a fair amount of conflict with multiple events happening on campus and your own commitments um, if you are students, faculty, or administrators. Um, Cornelius is known for his pioneering work with the world's only bass clarinet quartet called Edmund Wells. But after a 30-year career in high-caliber jazz, classical rock, and experimental music activities, mostly in multiple woodwinds with a focus on the bass clarinet, Boots retired from Western woodwinds in 2015 to focus exclusively on shakuhachi bamboo flute, uh, which he began studying back in 2001, along with its brother, um, the Tama. This is the baritone brother, the, the Tama, um, in which he will be performing both of these tonight. A graduate of Jacobs School of Music and a top student of Grandmaster Michael Chikuzen Gold, Cornelius, his Shakuhachi name, is Shinzen, or Deep Zen. He was licensed by Gu in 2013 as a Shihan, or master, in the dynamic Zen lineage of Watsuzumi no. So Cornelius is a well sought after composer, performer, and teacher. He has performed and lectured internationally, published scores and instructional materials, and released 16 albums and composed and arranged 75 pieces for bass clarinet quartet, 74 pieces for solo shakuhachi, 29 pieces for mixed woodwind chamber groups, and 34 works for rock, funk, and mixed electric ensembles. His composition catalog is in excess of 200 works. And as you can imagine, this diversity of his music appreciation, ranging from Pink Floyd to Etta James, results in an expressive style of woodwind performance that he sometimes calls bamboo gospel or avant-garde meditation or even hermit blues. Cornelius's compositions or performances have been featured in the films of Cicada Princes, Visions of Mustang, and Beard Club. In 2018, he was a World Shakuhachi Competition finalist and featured at the Sony PlayStation E3 in LA, the World Bamboo Congress in Mexico, the World Shakuhachi Festival in Great Britain. And in 2019, Boots founded the Heavy Roots Shakuhachi Ensemble, the world's first bass, clar uh, bass shakuhachi group um, that debuted in San Francisco Music Day. The music video for his composition, Green Swampy Water, won Best Music Video in the Tokyo International Short Film Festival in January 2021. So I would like for you all to join me in a warm welcome of 
Mr. Cornelius Boots to the forward stage here as he delivers a, what will be a wonderful concert for our EC and Richmond community.
merchant instruments. Their sound is, as I, as I realized in the middle of my, one of my sermons, I guess, in the classes I did today, compared to text, and a lot of our music we play from Buddhist sources is chant related, but compared to text, our sounds are complete unto themselves. Text is always representational or abstract as it, as it points to a concept. Um, maybe vowel sounds and chanting become the same as our sound. So the nonverbal aspect is why I'm primarily an instrumentalist. However, it's good to build a portal and a bridge to the audience's understanding of what exactly is going on up here, particularly as a solo and accompanied performer. Plus it gives me a chance to drink tea. <laughs> Uh, the first piece, we were able to get some programs together, so you already know that was uh, some Bruce Lee theme music that I arranged for solo shakuhachi. And those uh, sort of uh, Hong Kong cinema kind of like early martial arts kung fu movies, a lot of the soundtracks were really very tasty because they, they combined some kind of funk uh, rhythm section ideas with sort of like what I guess I would have to clumsily call pan-Asian offshoot, like derivative melodies, melodies that kind of sound like maybe they were regional or folk songs, like some of the pieces we learned on Shakuhachi. Um, and that one is, is, is one of them, particularly the, and the, the um, Return of the Dragon theme. So that's just sort of an icebreaker. The next one was uh, Pilgrim's Hymn, and I'm gonna play one more of a Pilgrim's Hymn. These are maybe as old as 13, 14th century um, Japan, sort of wandering, you know, mendicant uh, pilgrims, from what I understand, not always just Buddhists, and if they were, not always just Zen Buddhists. Um, just like in the hermit tradition in China, a lot of those very deep nature-oriented practitioners are quite uh, pluralistic. They might consider themselves Zen uh, and Pure Land Buddhist and, and a little bit Confucian on the side or something like that, which is kind of my approach as a musician and as a, a spiritual practitioner. So we're going to do one more pilgrim hymn because these are very evocative, I feel, um, and this one uses a very unusual scale, even for us. Um, and I'm switching already to the bigger flutes, so these are um, as Dyron's great introduction illuminated uh, the baritone brother of this flute, which is considered the standard size, but it's, it's kind of small. So the lower notes are uh, a little more substance to them. And, and these are, I will add, uh, natural bore instruments. So there's more, they're, they're, the, the bores are rebuilt with lacquer in a lot of flutes, and they have inlays. So the breath is not actually technically touching bamboo at any point players holding it outside. That's not my preference. It's me and the bamboo in symbiosis is, is this activity we're doing. It just so happens there was a great tradition and repertoire to learn um, to help that partnership along. So these are a little more rusticated the next couple of things I'm going to play.
man who came from California. And uh, it's, uh, it's, all, it's so raw inside, it's almost fuzzy. And I really love it. It smells like um, horses and popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> and I find that appealing. <laughs> Uh, this is a lullaby from Itsuki region, Itsuki no Komoita, and it, it has a lot of the sort of a typical tonalities of a lot of the folk songs and some of the lullabies. So this, you'll hear the, the lullaby and then um, I kind of improvise a little and then return to it. There's uh, there's kind of three uh, not really 
prompts per se, but suggestions in terms of um, engaging with shakuhachi as a meditation instrument. One is to place your awareness on the tone and kind of follow it as, uh, as if that was a magic carpet for you. Uh, the other is to avoid the tone and go into the space in the room. And the third one is to have no plan at all. So Honshirabe and after that is a Shingetsu and that's a little bit deeper into the catalog in terms of the uh, Honkyoku, which is the original repertoire, original um, sort of Zen chant and nature influenced solo and accompanied repertoire that was the primary catalog that we studied. Uh, and that translates to something like moon philosophy. So a lot of the titles are uh, nature-oriented, like Three Valleys, mm -hmm. Nesting of the Cranes, uh, Waterfall Peace, and it's, others are Buddhist uh, kind of philosophy, like Aji Khan, um, Echo, Tamuke, those are all in our repertoire. This is kind of halfway between those, where there's a kind of philosophical component, but it's, it's a moon um, reverence, we could say. And after that is uh, my arrangement of a, of a Coltrane piece that is very in line with a lot of this aesthetic uh, and ethos, according to me. And so that's my arrangement of, of this piece, wise one, uh, that includes some improvisation. Mm hmm.
my original lineage of John Coltrane, Eric Dolphy, Ross Amro, and Kirk, and then back to, to Duke Ellington. And this voracious appetite for creative innovation combined with a strong foundation in whatever came before in the tradition. So that's, that's where I'm coming from. It's the living tradition, not the dust gathering museum, brittle orthodoxy, shall we say. Who's with me on that? <laughs> the living tradition, not the other one. So now it's gonna get a little more rock and roll. And um, my original pieces are very blues influence that I play out of the time in here. Those are the ones that the diamond burden in last summer because it was a Charlie Patton tribute concert. And it is a little bit warm in here, so excuse me for getting warm, rock and roll. Uh, and that's what, that's what we're going to do now, two of those pieces, Black Earth and Holy Old Soul. So these are uh, using circular breathing, which means I can keep this, the sound going as long as I want without stopping. I wasn't doing that before. The Zen pieces have a kind of prohibition on them. They're breath-centric pieces, so the length of the phrase is the length of your breath. So it doesn't make sense to um, extend a lot of those, except in a few cases for sound effects, maybe. Uh, so you'll see I'm using that for these uh, riffs and bass line sections. So this is Black Earth. <laughs>
those uh, meditation pieces from what we're doing now is this element of time. Uh, and time itself is horizontal. And so when I was talking about the sound healing people laying flat, they're trying to get kind of relaxed, but they're, they're going horizontal, uh, which, you know, like I said, has its place, but horizontality is where time takes place. So if I play one note, the second note, now there's time. So the, the Zen pieces are timeless, pulse-free. Um, there's no beat, there's no grid to align with. And that is allowable due to it being a solo unaccompanied practice, which is very rare for woodwinders to engage in. So that's a part of my project, is understanding that practice uh, from Zen Shakuhachi and then putting the time component back in and making these robust solo and accompanying pieces with those tempo changes and other stylistic influences. But the band is, is all here. Um, and that's what, there's another one more piece like that. And then it really, then it really takes off with a small flute for the, small flute likes to go fast, that's all I'm gonna say. Whereas these are a nice medium substance. This is holy old soul.
sticking with the 1960s uh, rock and roll um, uh, theme, uh, I think it's uh, Dick Dale and, and Miserloo, very classic uh, surf rock tune that I got frustrated trying to transcribe a new arrangement of, so I stole the scale and a lot of the isms and wrote an original piece in that style. We called it Generous Loop. And uh, I haven't been playing that since about 2015, so let's hope um, all of these surf rock isms work today on the flute. Uh, which, by the way, as I said we'll take questions on construction afterwards, but this is a chunk taken out of the bamboo. There's no reed, there's no mouthpiece, there's no football hole, there's nothing to really help you produce the sound. It's actually just a tube. This is forwards, this is backwards. So it's not that, it's not that different. Um, and you're quite a distance away compared to transverse blue, which is a, a closer uh, tone hole. So um, it's, uh, it's a steep, it's a steep curve, but the benefit is uh, this expressive, um, endless kind of uh, uh, feedback and partnership with the bamboo that even enjoys playing surf rock. <laughs> Uh, statement. 
uh, called Underground Sun. And once again, to put it at the end of the, at the set list, it's a little bit athletic, so let's hope it, it works.